Hello everyone and welcome back. This is the second part of our series where we are building the Apple Stocks application using Flutter. And we're going to be using hard-coded data, some dummy data, and eventually we will replace it by the Web API. All right. So on the right side, you can see our current progress. We have got the stocks, January, the date, hard-coded, the search field, which it doesn't really do anything. And now in this video, we want to display at least the list of all the stocks. So here is what it should look like. So we are, we got the stocks title, we got the date and we got the search, but we are missing obviously this stock list. So let's focus on that. The first thing I'm going to do is right now we are inside the home page and I don't really want to pollute the home page much further. So I'm going to go ahead and most probably going to create a separate control, separate widget, which will be responsible for creating the news list. Now, one other mistake that I've done is I place the homepage inside the widget. Homepage is actually a page. So let me go ahead and create a new folder pages. And I'm gonna move this homepage into there. And let's go to over here into our main dart and import the correct path now, which is in the pages. All right, there we go. So inside the widgets, I'm gonna go ahead and add a new file and I'm gonna call that file stock list dot dart. We're using snake case. That is the recommendation or that is the convention in dart and flutter. Okay, so there we go. We got our stock list. It doesn't really display any stocks right now. So we're going to go ahead and create a class called stock list, which is going to extends the state list widget. And now we have to implement at least the build function. So let's go ahead and implement the build function, which is going to return something. Now, in order to display the stocks, we need to make sure that we can pass in the stocks. So let's go ahead and create a list of stock, which is a class which doesn't exist right now, and we'll call it stocks. We will also create a stock list constructor where you will have to pass in the stocks. But what exactly is this stock? Well, we don't really have anything called stock. So I'm going to go ahead and add a new folder. I will call it models. So stock is basically a model for us right now. Eventually you'll see that we will change it to a view model. Right now we are simply hard coding the data. So you can kind of think of it as a, a view model also for now, but eventually you will see that we will be changing all of this stuff. All right, so let's go ahead and create a new class on a new file called stock.dart. Now, since we are hard coding everything, I'm simply going to copy and paste all of the stuff over here. And there's nothing really much going on. We have a class called stock, which has a symbol, a company, a price. And in order to create a stock, you better pass in all of those three things. And we have a static function, get all, which simply returns hard coded information, hard coded stocks. So now if I go to stock list, I can go ahead and import the stock.dart file. There we go. And now we have our build function. You can see it's not really displaying anything. It's returning simply null or nil. Now we can go ahead and create our list over here. Now, the reason that I am creating a stock list as a separate widget is that we can reuse that later on. And the only way that you can reuse that or the only way to work with stock list is to pass in the list of stocks. So the parent, which in this case is the home page, will eventually be somehow getting the list and then passing the list to the stock list control or the stock list widget. So let's get started. I'm going to go ahead and return the list view dot separated. You can use other ones also, the list view dot builder, but I want to separate it out with a divider. So that's why I'm using separated. Separate builder, I'm going to get access to the context and the index. And this can actually go ahead and return us the actual separator. You can create 
any separator you like. I'm just going to use divider and passing in the color with colors.gray and passing it, let's say 400. Okay, that's pretty much it. The next part for using the list view would be to use the item count. So item count will be equals to stocks.length. And then the next one will be the item builder. We're gonna again get access to the context and the index. And then we will return some sort of a widget from here. I'm simply going to return uh, stock. It's always a good idea to start very, very small. See, I, I'm not using these stocks right now. I'm simply returning a text, which is stock. I just want to display something over here. And most probably I will have to style it also. So let's go ahead and do a text style and use the color, which is colors.white so that we can actually see it because by default, the text color will be black. Now let's go back to our home page and try to find out where this padding closes right over here. And right after the padding, we can most probably go ahead and create a stock list control. We have to pass in the stocks, which we can say stock dot. And for some reason, it's not giving me the option, which is get all stocks or something. I may have to import stock. So let's go ahead and first import stock. There we go. And let's all check out the function, which is get all. Okay. And let's go ahead and refresh it. Let's see what happens if we refresh this. Okay, so some sort of an error is actually being thrown. I think what we have is that we have to give some sort of a fixed size to our stock list, some sort of a size. We are not really giving it a size say, because this is a list. So we can go ahead and maybe wrap this around, refactor, wrap with the widget, and that widget can be a size box. And we have to give some sort of a height. So I'm gonna go ahead and say media query dot off context dot size dot height. Let's go ahead and see what it displays. Okay, we're displaying something, but we will go ahead and say minus three one ten because we don't really want the height of the size box to be this to be the same as the height of this particular well the container that we are using. So we are subtracting some amount to make the size box a little bit smaller, all right? And now you can see that we can get the stock being displayed. But obviously, we don't really want the stock to be displayed. You want something else to be displayed, the actual stock information, which is not being displayed right now. So let's go back to our stock list. And this is where we will start decorating our stock list. So let's go ahead and start doing it. So inside the item builder, we can get access to the stock and we go ahead and create a separate variable, which can be stocks and then the index of the stock. So I will get a particular stock at that particular index. And instead of returning the text over here, I can go ahead and maybe use something else like a list tile. So list tile, there we go. Let's go ahead and add some sort of a content padding. So I can say edge inserts all 10 title. This is the middle part that is going to be appearing. But the middle part that you see, which consists of the symbol and the company, which is this one symbol and the company, it's all vertical, right? So maybe we can actually use the power of columns. So let's go ahead and use a column. And inside the column widget, we can add two things. Since it's a column, we can add a text and we will have some value over here. The value will be injected from stock.symbol and we can provide some sort of a style to it. So style will be text style and then we can use a color. Color will be colors.white and then the font size, which is 24 and then some sort of a font weight. So you can see if I save it, it actually is starting to take effect. So font weight can be 500 is fine. There we go, a little bit darker. 
The other thing that we want to do is we want it to be left aligned. It's not really left aligned right now. So inside the column, I can go ahead and say cross axis alignment, and I can set cross axis alignment to start so that they are left aligned. Perfect, right? The next thing is for the company. Since I'm already inside the column, I can simply add another control, another text control most probably, that can allow me to create a company. There we go, great. All right, so now we come to the stock price and we will see that how to display all of this information. So this can be used by trailing and once again trailing is can be part of a column meaning the, on the top it will be the price of the stock and on the bottom it's kind of like the change of the stock which is all constant I, I didn't really create any feel for it but we can make it constant comma well not comma I guess we have to get, get out of this one we are in the title and now for the trailing so for trailing again we are going to start with a column and we will have children because we need to add two different things. We need to add this top part and we need to add this bottom part. The top part is actually pretty simple because it's simply a text control. So I can simply use that. That's not a big deal. There we go. It's actually, a, since it's trailing, that's why it's appearing on the right hand side. The next part is a some sort of a control that can be have rounded corners. Uh, there are multiple ways of doing that. I'm simply going to use a container. So let's go ahead and create a container. And inside the container, I'm going to go ahead and do the alignment, which is alignment.center. And after alignment.center, I'm going to do a decoration, which is box decoration. And in the box decoration, I'm going to go ahead and set the border radius to be the border radius or circular and five. Okay, nothing really is happening over here right now. All right, so color will be colors.red. All right, most probably I messed up somewhere. That's why it's not appearing anything. Okay, let's see where am I messing it up. Trailing width, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so we haven't really specified the width of the container, so that's not a big deal. We can specify the width of the container is 75 and we can supply maybe the height of the container also to something let's say 25 is fine there's no value in the container right now because the container doesn't really have any child and we can actually add a child which can be a simple text control and i don't really have any value to assign over here so i'm simply going to hard code it with something like this one is fine and style can be a text style where the color will be colors.white. And make sure to add a comma. So there we go. And you can see that it is definitely scrollable. Now, why did we leave out this bottom part right now? The reason we left out this bottom part is that eventually we will be having the news to be displayed over here, right? So this is it. This is how you will create the listing, the stocks listing now, nothing over here is dynamic, meaning all the data is actually coming from our stock file, which is all hard-coded data. But it's a good idea to have some sort of idea, I mean, some sort of a picture of how it will eventually look like when we are getting this data from some external source, like a web API. So this part is done. Now, the next part is what we're going to move on to actually creating the news part of it, the bottom part which you can see a little bit of over here, the business news part. And we are again going to use hard-coded data because we just want to see how it will look and feel like. And then we can go ahead and start replacing our stocks as well as the news. If you like this video and all the rest of my work, then if you want to support my work, then the best way would be to check out my new course on Flutter. It's called Flutter and Dart, build apps using MVVM design pattern. This course is meant for intermediate to advanced level developers who wants to take their skills to the next level in learning how to build a little bit more complicated application using the MVVM design pattern. It is a nine hour plus course 
And you can see that we start by first understanding the MVVM design pattern. Then we dive into the news application, which fetches the actual live news from the database, I mean, from the web API. And then it goes to the Place Finder application, which integrates with the Google Places as well as Google Maps. The City Care application is actually pretty cool because it allows you to take pictures and also take pictures and select pictures from your photo library and then upload it to a custom server. So it's actually pretty cool. It uh, uses the DO library to upload all the pictures. And then finally, you have Hacker News app. You already are familiar with Hacker News. So we're going to make a clone of Hacker News application. And then I've also added some cloned apps like Apple Stocks app, Apple Weather app, Apple News app, and Apple App Store apps, just a source code so that you can just play around with it. So this is a very good course, and you can already see that it's just released as a new course, and already we have like 100 plus students enrolled with 4.8 rating. Um, and I really do want you to enjoy this course. So please take a look at the YouTube description. You'll find a link and click on the link and you can get the best discount. The best way to get the course is to use the link that is in the YouTube description. And if you have any questions, please let me know. Thank you so much, and I really hope that you enjoy the course.